African olive is such an invasive and threatening weed species. It's so thick, it's so dense, that uh, excludes all the other native plants. And it's like a green blanket, uh, it just blends everything into one green plain blob. Each tree produces 25,000 fruit a year. Birds spread the seed and then we'll get an invasion front in the grassland and around trees that the birds land on. When it hits 10, 15 metres and the canopy touches the neighbouring olive plants, there's no light for all water available for plants that are growing under there and that limits the habitat potential. Where the machines are working at the moment, just above that was uh, Western Sydney Dry Rainforest. There's some remnants of that. And below that, we would have had some Moishaw woodland and Cumberland Plain woodland. So we've got these wooded uh, grassy areas that uh, transition upslope into a, a more densely wooded area with vines covering. I guess there's multiple tools and ways to remove African olive, but the large areas that are very dense and straightforward, we use machines. And that's so we can reduce the population. That's very threatening and in a way we need to use similar force in order to bring it under control. Machine mulching creates a, almost a blank canvas where you can start again. This is just the beginning for the treatment of African olive. We control the olive seedlings and re-sprouts from, for the next 10 years and encourage the growth of other native plants, predominantly grasses. Then we get the wattles, the eucalypts coming through, and we may do some revegetation. There's 4,000 hectares of African olive infestation in the region surrounding the Australian Botanic Garden in Western Sydney. If we were not to treat those dense areas, we would have the, the rest of our 416 hectare site under threat from the spread of that olive. Where we've cleared some of these areas of African olive, there is a, a significant potential to return them back to Cumberland Plain woodland and Western Sydney dry rainforests.